Hi, uh, you are watching Sight Plus, and this is Romesh Shivas. Please do subscribe to the channel for the HR news, for HR updates, and conversation on the top of the HRs. Today, we are going to discuss about the positive psychology in workplace. Means a workplace which has productive and healthy work conditions, and where employees feel more engaged and joyful with the organization. To understand better what is the positive psychology in workplace, today we have two senior panelists. Let me introduce Mr. Ratan Chuk. He is a co-founder of Fundflow Technologies and Ms. Shruti Verma. Shruti is a counselor and chief psychologist at Mind Opener. Shruti, if I come to you first, uh, because you are a psychologist, so first I would like to understand that what is the definition of uh, positive psychology? First of all, Ramesh, thank you very much for inviting me for this panel discussion. Um, let me start by giving you a perspective on when psychology became a scientific field. Uh, all the psychologists started off by defining psychology as something that was incorrect or absent in the human beings. So, for example, uh, basically what I'm talking about is the pathology part of it. Just as the doctors trying to find out, okay, does this person has diabetes or blood pressure? Similarly, from a psyche point of view, psychologists were trying to find out what is wrong with people, which is to say, if they have too much of sadness, they defined it as depression. If they had too much of fear, they defined it as anxiety, excessive nervousness, and so on. And therefore, all the mental health issues came about. Positive psychology, when it started off, was it was a very new field at that time. And uh, we started off by saying, okay, how can I improve this particular person or how can people improve themselves their happiness their joy and mostly states of positive emotions that we feel throughout the day and that was the beginning of positive psychology now it has progressed a lot but that's where uh, positive psychology started on how to improve human existence very beautifully, I think, uh, Shruti, you have explained about the positive psychology. So, Rakan would like to add here something. And uh, also, I would like to understand from you that how do you see the positive psychology when we talk about the workplace, positive psychology in workplace? So, I agree with Shruti that, you know, there is a human tendency to start with negative rather than positive. So, what needs to be corrected? So, you would see that most of the leaders and managers would be spending significant amount of their time correcting people. And, and that is very uh, counterproductive. Uh, so you need to really uh, understand what motivates employees. And even if it has to be uh, some correction or it has to be a feedback, how it is delivered. And that's one aspect we can delve further into it as we proceed. However, the other aspect you have to understand is unlike Shruti, most of the manager who joined the workforce uh, have no exposure to human psychology. It's not taught uh, in a lot of uh, subjects. If you take taken a science stream, you clearly never read about it. So most of the people learn how to manage teams on the ground and as they grow, they do it. So there are a lot of companies conduct trainings, but this is something which people do not understand deeply and therefore there is um, an important need to train people in that aspect. And lastly, we have to understand that, you know, what motivates people. Uh, the other way to look at it is that, you know, you go through an interview process or a selection process and you try to find the best candidate for the fit. And the person who walks into the door is highly motivated. But six months, one in, year into the job, the person is completely disoriented. He, doesn't he or she doesn't understand what does it take to be successful. And therefore the negativity starts setting in, the demotivation starts setting in. And therefore, the whole concept of positive psychology has to be revisited and reestablished in the organization. I think very interesting points are shared by you, uh, both the panelists. And, uh, you know, sometimes the emotions uh, also play very important roles. Some positive emotions, you can say, like compassion, uh, that that uh, play a very important role, uh, empathy and uh, the gratitude. So these emotions are uh, uh, you know play a very pivotal role when we talk about a positive uh, uh, work culture in an organization. So how do you see the role of emotional intelligence when we talk about a positive psychology in workplace? 
Let me start in that case. Ratan, I hope that's okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. So I think the best way to understand something is to imagine the absence of that thing. Okay. So imagine these emotions of compassion, empathy, gratitude, or in general, emotional intelligence is absent. Right. So, which means that conflicts turn to personal animosities, which means that anger is freely unleashed on each other, which means that fear, it just manifests into politics because when people are afraid, they try to protect their territory through whichever means and pol workplace politics is one part of it. So, it literally becomes a doggy -e dog situation because that is the absence of emotional intelligence. Now, imagine the opposite of that in a workplace where, you know, uh, everybody is uh, appreciated for the good work that they do. Uh, people have empathy when failure is witnessed. Uh, failure is taken as, you know, something to learn from and not something to look down upon. So those are the kind of places, uh, those are the kind of attributes which emotional intelligence brings. So needless to say, it's not just an imperative because even World Economic Forum has rated emotional intelligence as the top 10 skills of today's century or, this, uh, or the 21st century. But imagine if the situation, if the organization lacked emotional intelligence, it would not just be a not nice work culture to operate in, but it would also be quite costly for the organization because the attrition level typically goes very, very high. And we all know the cost of hiring new talent and so on and so forth. So that's really the importance of emotional intelligence in today's workplace, in my opinion. Ratan, would you like to add your something? I think from positive psychology standpoint is very important from a very basic thing, you know, do we acknowledge people, uh, you know, mm -hmm. so as a leader, do you even acknowledge the presence of everybody who's on the floor or who's in your team? Do you just engage with them? A lot, lot of time, we just don't even acknowledge people if they are not in your hierarchy. And the other aspect is, do you have good listening skills? Do you give enough time to listen to the other person? You know, there are conflicts, there are um, uh, various other aspects, politics or whatever you want to call it. But every human being has their, their needs. They are dealing with their own challenges. And do we understand uh, what is the other people's world? What are they into? So, And, and how can we help? Do we know that sometimes our actions inadvertently are creating problems for others? And how do you find all of that? You only find that by listening to other people. Just we're spending 20 minutes with one person once in a month or so will give you a perspective of their world. And therefore, then you can understand, you know, what, what is going on and how can you contribute in that, uh, that person's life. And in today's fast-paced world, the counter aspect of this is rewarded. If you are busier than other, you have you are more important. You are more successful. So where is the time in today's phase to sit down and say, hey, let's talk for 15 minutes, no agenda. I just want to know what's going on with you. So that is a challenge when we expect people to be super fast, super efficient, and at the same time have EQ and patience and uh, you know respect for each other and empathy for each other. So how do you balance all of that? And therefore, people who balance it super well are very successful. And the, another aspect that I would like to add to it is that, you know, we are very, we are very focused on instant gratification and therefore we become very task focused. What is the result that we want in next one hour? The long term is what is the result we want in this week? And when you're talking about long term results, long term rewards and taking care of attrition or growth of people that require a totally different perspective. Your, your action should be more focused towards long-term results and not instant task uh, objectives to be met. And that, again, is another conflict you, which has to weigh on your mind if you want to build a positive psychology in the organization. 
Ratan, you touched upon uh, workplace conflict. So, of course, the work relationship uh, matters. Work relationship uh, play a very pivotal role when we talk about the positive work culture. Uh, but uh, we see uh, many times that uh, there is a conflict among the team members, conflict uh, within the team, uh, maybe the conflict with the bosses, some toxic relationship, etc. So uh, if we cannot uh, make the zero uh, conflict, uh, uh, this kind of, uh, how we can minimize such conflicts at the workplace? So conflict is not a bad thing. If you have difference of opinion or different of approach, uh, that's that's actually healthy so that different perspectives come on the table and let the best idea win. The challenge is in how to deal with conflict. Uh, we get so wedded with our point of view that we just want to win up and our point of view should survive or sustain itself. And that's where the conflict becomes toxic. So I think uh, a healthy debate in terms of ability to speak and share your point of view, explain why that is important. And at the same time, ability to listen to others' point of view with complete objectivity uh, and therefore then figure out what is best for the objective of that project, that organization is super important. Uh, in fact, the opposite happens. We get so deeply entrenched in our point of view that the action of other person is perceived to us as a threat. And then we dig our heels even further and that vicious circle goes and on. So I think first we have to disengage with this path of um, conflict, which is a downward spiral, have respect for other people's point of view, and then collectively come with a decision or conclusion that, you know, once debated properly, what is the best uh, approach taking forward? Generally, that doesn't happen. Uh, generally, we are so... Uh, committed to our own point of view and if you're a boss then you just dictate and bulldoze people through and there you kind of get short-term results and long-term people get burnt out demotivated and eventually leave the organization and Shruti, how do you see these uh, workplace conflicts and how these uh, workplace conflicts can be better resolved i think um, a good work culture actually rewards a good conflict because it means that a lot of ideas are coming to the table now problem that happens is not the conflict itself per se but the problem that happens is what is rewarded in the organization because a lot of times if my idea is going to win then i am the one who's getting rewarded it's not about me it's when the ego is be becoming too strong in people that is when the downfall happens. It's not about me. It's about what is right for the organization, what is in the long-term interest of the organization. So when the I is not rewarded, but we, the collective, is rewarded, that is when I feel we can be in a good situation to resolve conflict. And what is it that we approach the conflict with, right? Do we feel threatened, as Ratan was saying? which means that is my fear response so strong that I cannot stand the other person being rewarded. So which is also going to say in some ways that it's not a very safe workplace uh, for me to exist in. So uh, a good conflict is managed where people feel psychological safety. And that is something that will come to further. And I'd like to delve into that a little bit more. But a good conflict gets resolved better in a place where there is psychological safety for people to exist in. Uh, Shruti, we discussed about the positive uh, psychology and uh, we have also discussed some of the aspects of the positive psychology. If we go a little deeper and try to understand you again, that what is the organizational uh, positive uh, psychology and uh, how we can create a positive work uh, environment, a culture. So I, uh, as I said in the beginning, just the very definition of what is positive psychology, which means that we try to find how I can improve or we can improve people 
within the organization in context of the organization, which means that we try to find the motivations and strengths of people, which means that we build a leadership which is very supportive of everybody in the organization, right? It also means that my employees are constantly engaged because they find the work meaningful, something that they find personally rewarding as well and not just they're not just doing a nine to five job watching the clock and go leaving at five o'clock it means that I find meaning in that particular um, job that I'm doing so these are some aspects of uh, positive psychology and where I'm also able to create a certain work-life balance, which is so important because people also have other priorities other than the work. And I'm not just chasing deadlines all the time, but I'm able to create that work-life balance. Uh, the other thing which I find missing in a lot of organizations is transparency of communication when it comes to leadership. You know, the leadership's ability to communicate transparently. I think these are some of the things that go into um, various aspects of positive uh, organizational psychology and uh, the one of the ways in which uh, we try to build with whatever organizations that I try to work with is that we have something called the psychological capital which means that we uh, through the leadership we try to instill these four aspects of positivity which entails in uh, an organization working cohesively and where people can largely be productive most of the time and these four different aspects of this psychological capital is the first one it's it goes by the acronym hero right where h stands for hope which means that i have thought about my path in uh, you know, in uh, with my leadership, and I have hope of achieving that. E here stands for efficacy, which means that I, along with my leadership, we both believe in my efficacy that I will be able to achieve some of these goals. R here stands for resilience, which means that if I fail at some of these goals, my leadership stands with me in terms of learning from those failures. And I'm resilient enough to get up and try those things again and not just, you know, woe in my um, failures that I have just encountered. And lastly, it's about O, uh, which is which stands for optimism, which means that we build a culture or an environment of optimism because where there is optimism, we have this positive drive to move forward. If you look at the slogans of many countries, whether it was in America that uh, great uh, days will be here again or America will be great again, or in India, when we say, Achhe din aayenge, we all try to instill a sense of optimism because without optimism, no organization, whether it's a country, a state, a company, or even a family unit can operate with. So I feel these are some aspects of um, positive organizational psychology. I think beautifully you have explained about the positive organizational psychology with multiple uh, examples as well. Uh, Ratan uh, Suti also touched upon some employee engagement part and also uh, meaning in their work. So that she has also touched upon. So if you look at uh, both the uh, aspects, so growth opportunities play a very important role, meaningful growth opportunities. Without growth opportunities, uh, you cannot engage the employees. So how do you see here the role of HR leaders in uh, providing the growth opportunities to their employees uh, to create a positive and a productive uh, work uh, uh, culture. I think it all starts from the leadership and leadership should be able to paint a picture of the whole organization, what the vision is, where we are headed and how each one of them, each person in the organization fits into that journey. A lot of people are not even aware uh, how their work contributes into the overall objective of the organization. So sometimes the objectives are measured in terms of revenue, profitability, and things like that. And somebody who's not into the sales or marketing organization would wonder, you know, how do I 
help achieve the organization's objective or maybe they feel that you know we have nothing to do with it we have some other role and they are playing some other game together so i think i and making people fit into the wider picture and how they contribute to it is the first step um, and then the second is from hr and leadership point of view they should have the vision to identify that as the organization grows what is the skill set that need to be developed what are the roles that would get created over the period of time and how do we kind of develop our own talent uh, to be ready for those positions and then be openly talking about it therefore people can choose what path they want to take and if they are developing themselves and are performing well then they'll eventually be ready for that role uh, many leaders believe that the organization as it grows and becomes much bigger than the existing people may not be able to fit the bills and they have to hire senior people from outside and there's enough evidence to demonstrate that uh getting people from outside may be very well but the chances of failure are much higher in that strategy and therefore it has to be a very uh, very uh, balanced approach in terms of how many people should be developed internally and how many should be taken from outside and with that approach you can let people know the growth of organization automatically means uh, their own growth as long as they're performing well so those are few things uh that uh, one need to look at and in the whole process there should be enough training coaching and mentoring opportunities so that the organization can identify unique talent of each person and nurture that uh and look at the key strength of those individuals and see how those strengths can be further developed uh, for the organization's benefit um and also how do you identify the areas which are probably uh, not so good in that individual and how to give feedback so that even if those areas cannot be developed and become the highest skills but they can be managed you know like instead of saying you went wrong this time uh, you may probably say you know yeah you attempted very well it did not give you the results that you wanted what do you would you what would you do differently next time round you know that kind of conversation can make people uh, develop and think rather than just reprimanding them every time they go wrong so some of those thoughts that come to me on my uh, in my mind when you ask that question yeah absolutely some very important points uh, i think the feedback and uh, the communication with the leaders that is very important sometimes uh, the employees feel disconnected uh, with the leaders and i was going through a survey and according to the survey more than 50% employees are quitting the job just because they feel disconnected with the leaders they feel a communication gap Uh, with the leaders so uh, suti if i come to you again and uh, the work life balance that is also one of the top priority for the employees uh, as of now and uh, this is also one of very important aspect of a uh, positive psychology in workplace so how do you see the work life balance uh, there are many different aspects to work life balance because when we come to an organization we don't just come to uh the organization in that role like if i am manager hr that's not my whole being there are many different aspects to me as a person and uh, when i say work life balance which means that even outside that role there is a life which exists for me as a person and that is what i mean that it's the responsibility somewhere of the organization or if not responsibility then if the uh, organization hopes to create a certain positive environment then one should be looking at those other aspects so uh, just to quote some examples in this particular area one is um, the, uh, there are very high pressure jobs at this point in time right where you are not able to complete the jobs uh, that particular role in the given 8 hours and as a result you're staying in office 10 hours 12 hours 15 hours and so on and so forth right so the employee can be extended some level of flexibility in those hours for example that you know that many hours i'm going to operate from this place and you know these many hours i'm going to be operating from office you know that level of flexibility the other level of flexibility that can be offered is we are some of the times one has seen that 
uh, we are time driven that that kind of time was given to that kind of job but we can be goal driven that i don't mind where you operate from how you get it done the goal has been met it has been met in an ethical way so we need to be operating in more goal driven ways the other thing is looking after the mental and emotional well being of the person because this constant stressors which are coming up right because there are internal customers there's external customers there these jobs are very very demanding in a very in a lot of ways so i would say uh, you know in some of the employee assistant programs having their mental and emotional health looked after constitutes to their work life balance because if i'm going back home in a very very stressed kind of a mode then that's going to impact my interaction with my my family right my children my spouse my parents whoever are at home and that's that's unfair that i carry that a uh, negative emotional burden back home so therefore providing assistance to employees to manage those stresses to look after the emotional well being i think those are some of the things in my opinion are very important for work life balance ratan i think we tried to cover the entire subject we discuss about the positive psychology we discuss about the workplace uh, conflict we discuss about the work Uh, life balance we discuss about well being and uh, anything else which is uh, important and we did not uh, touch here would like to share i would emphasize that one should have a long term view and uh, as a leader you should have empowered your people and delegated your work to the extent that you have enough time to observe uh, mentor and listen to your people uh, so this whole conflict of time versus what is important uh, should just be faded away as far as leadership is concerned and uh, in that process all the long term things that i spoke about in terms of creating positivity in term, terms of understanding what people need what are their conflicts and conflict may not be within the organization also it may be amongst the roles that an individual is playing either internally in the organization or outside and how do you enable them how do you kind of motivate them or help them get over the uh, hurdles they are dealing with or the challenges they are dealing with i don't believe uh, most of these issues are time driven whether it's work life balance or otherwise i mean you would see that there are people uh, in this world who are doing 10 times more responsibility taking 10 times more responsibility than you and me are taking and they still also have 24 hours so it's how do you become more effective and how do you deal with stress and how do you unwind yourself to shruti's point that you know you had a tough day how do you build the capability and strength that when you go home uh, you have you know recycled yourself and you're ready for it uh, and it's 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 not that if you just spend 8 hours a day you'll be able to do that better is is the skill that you need to deal with the conflicts of the life and, and strengthen your mind and intellect to deal with that and those are the things that the leader can help people develop grow and and therefore be far more effective and have a much bigger growth path uh, than generally people have in their career so i think we have to just be little unconventional about the way some of these things are frequently spoken about and become a trend uh, we need to continuously be effective work life balance really doesn't mean or positive psychology doesn't mean you compromise on the results the results are there you are in a competitive space not only in your company in your industry in your country but globally right so you have to be competitive you have to be innovative but at the same time build the ability and build the ability of your team build the ability of your organization to deal with all these challenges in a far more mature and effective manner i think that is the approach i would recommend when dealing with the organization psychology and shruti any of your uh, final and quick comments so uh, you know since we've been talking a lot about positive psychology the father of uh, positive psychology which is seligman he gave us three levels of happiness while we are operating not just in an organization but in general about our life that is one is the a uh, life where we have most positive experiences which means that we have 
positive emotional states throughout our day or most parts of our day. That's one part of it. And that's the base level. The second level is where we are collecting good experiences through wisdom, learning, and so on and so forth. And then the final part of it, which is which Ratan also touched upon, is doing a meaningful job or a, some anything that gives us meaning, right? And that is actually which something that gives us long-lasting uh, joy, I would say, not happiness. Right. Yeah, I was so about to say that sometimes uh, chasing this word happiness is sometimes a misnomer because yeah. in anybody's life, in anybody's role, there will be a lot of unpleasant things you would have to do, which are the uh, which are required at that moment in your life. So it's it's being honest to yourself, being contented rather than chasing happiness is what I would say. Thank you so much, Suti and Ratan, for joining the conversation and sharing your wonderful thoughts on this uh, topic. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ramesh, Thank you. for having me. Thank you for inviting me.